Hi guys, Colster here with the final episode of the Pac-Man World Repack Long Play. Continuing on from completing the previous areas, all we have left to do now is the boss mansion area. This becomes unlocked after completing the previous areas, same as with the original PlayStation title. These are the hardest stages in the game, and I had to cut out some parts of the video where I lost the stock in back-to-back -back Ghostly Garden and Creepy Catacombs. Which were more or less due to being reckless, as opposed to actually sucking. It's important to get a no-miss on every stage for maximum score. You know what's funny about the tombstone and the hole in it? In the original PlayStation game, if you jumped into the hole where the tombstone is, Pac-Man will automatically jump right back out. No, you crazy person! I'm not dead! Stop trying to make it look like I am! Yet in this game, he just stays in there until you jump out, and then there's a slot metal in it. Yeah. In this game, since you can't see the shadow easily, jumping across these little coffin platforms can be very hard. I completely forgot about the strawberry and the fruit door along with it on the stage, though that's fine considering that the fruit door just has an extra life. I'm not missing out on much. I got all of the fruit doors in this recording that were actually required. Like this one. The blue coffins disappear shortly after you land on them. They take slightly longer to vanish in this game than the original PlayStation game. Plus, you have the hanging ability after a jump, which makes dealing with them a lot easier in comparison. In addition to having flamethrowers that rotate in place where they are, you also have one extra ghost. You have five ghosts in this maze instead of four.
I'm only gonna take out the bats that I deem conveniently possible to take out. Look at you, Talk, having your own face as a moon. How do you manage? In the original game, if you tried to bounce on top of the bats, they would damage you depending on where you landed on them. To heal all, not that I need right now. I'm not taking the chance with trying to jump over there and reach the coffin while it's moving. See how I only barely landed? Gotta be careful around the bats as you cross these. Just like with the parrots in the pirate ship area, they drop a bomb once you get underneath them. And after they drop their bomb, they'll try to swoop down and grab you with their talons if you're underneath them at that moment. So, avoid getting directly underneath them. The hanging ability while jumping obviously helps. To get to this coffin safely, jump and try to align pack with the pack dots as you go down. We got another leap of faith right here. We got another intimidating jump onto a coffin platform down here.
taking a risk here. These skeletons in the formal wear will blow fire towards you with their candles. If you fail to take them out quickly enough. So make sure you hurt them or get out of their way before they do so. Turns out I had a melon. Right, moving forward. You have to bounce up this slope as opposed to rev rolling. If you rev roll off of this ramp, you'll fall to your death. Because there's no platforms here. There are also several scenes throughout the boss mansion area like this, where there is a slope you have to bounce up that have block structures on them, which basically stop you from being able to rev roll up them. So you have to bounce up them anyway. There's a well-hidden bonus ladder here. I made myself promise not to forget that during this recording. They also reshaped some parts of these stages to do a lot more horizontal scrolling throughout the world and less vertical or forward and backward movement compared to the original PlayStation game. There's one exact scene in Creepy Catacombs that I remember for a fact. And I think they did that in Ghostly Garden and Grave Danger as well in some parts. some more of this. This is payback for hurting me earlier. Come here. There's a bit more to the outro of Ghostly Garden than the original game had. Like adding uh, some dots and a power pellet to deal with the ghosts here. And then a elevator to get to where the exit token is.
Now the bonus stage in the boss mansion is very difficult. And even though it is easier in this game than it was in the original PlayStation game, it's still very easy to mess up. And I failed it in the first attempt after Ghostly Garden. So, be warned. On rare occasions, this has happened to me once before, the slot machine will activate Galaxian Fever, where every entry on the slot will become a Galaxian boss, promising you a 3-up. I'm not sure what the trigger convention for that is. It has happened to me in the playthrough I did once before. So, there's a bonus as well. I recklessly screwed up creepy catacombs as well, so I have a stock loss after this loads. These stages are not easy, mind you. Yeah. I just love how they redesigned creepy catacombs to look like it's mostly in a haunted mansion instead of outdoors and raining, like in the original game. You got these living tombstone creatures. They'll run towards you and flop once they get close enough. Get out of their way and then bounce on them while they're... while they're bellied on the ground. To destroy them. more. There we go. He can't hide from me.
We got some more tricky movie pl moving platforms where you can't see your shadow as easily. even attempt to get that medal. After all, the slot kind of let me down in the previous round. We got a pitch black maze along with fire hazards. That doesn't sound like a fine combination. All it takes is focus. Now I gotta run past some smashers. In the original PlayStation game, these would come down as soon as you approach them. And simple contact with them, not just only getting smashed underneath them, would inflate damage. In this game though, they smash at their own pace, and general contact with them does not hurt you, only if you get crushed underneath them. Making it a lot more fair. Especially in the part where you have to get the one fruit to get the door that has a key. So... Kind of funny how you can actually see the ground in this part of the stage. Like it's the entrance to a haunted mansion. This stage was designed very differently in the original PlayStation game. Oh my god, what if you couldn't grab the edge of those? I'd have lost a few good precious minutes. Down here is where you find the special lemon. Ah, I'm a reckless blood maple. They added some more terrain on this part of the Smasher, making it a lot easier to get past it. And then there's the special lemon I need. Mm -hmm. 
here's the key right here. The bookshelves are simply a redesign of what the stage originally was in the original game. I'm not interested really in the slot metal. And while it does look like you can jump through the holes in the bookshelves, you cannot. Likely to keep in uh, faith with the original game. The kind of gates, the kind of fences that the wall originally used to be. This is what I was talking about earlier with reshaping some stages to do more horizontal scrolling as opposed to forward and backward. I know for a fact they did it at this part of Creepy Catacombs. I'm pretty sure they also did that in one part of Crazy Cannonade. This is just a little bit scary as well. They added a little bit to the ending of the stage as well. Yeah. <laughs> 
the fruit or what you really need to go for in the bonus stages. The other items besides the fruit are optional. As you can see, I clearly missed the slot medal. Seriously, I hate these. Unfortunately, we didn't quite get enough points to get the present that I detailed in the earlier episodes of the playthrough. Just before Grave Danger. So I have to play that whole stage legitimately. Not that that's a problem. The stage itself is just really long, that's all. I didn't mean to get every single heal one. And then Stone Boy came along and thwacked me. Storm clouds can be used as platforms, though they dissipate after you stand on them. Shortly after you first land on them. After they respawn, they also reset their pattern of their lightning strike, which is important for up ahead. <sighs> Not 
good. The problem is that the game has slight input lag. And that's not even an excuse. Vanishing platforms mixed with storm clouds. The most inconvenient combination. Absolutely terrible. The random block structures included there made it impossible to get both of them. Require that apple before I progress. I just love how they add the pack dot chain here.
Ow. As opposed to having just a few of these vanishing platforms leading to a melon and take you right back. They have a whole section of these going right back to the beginning. Saving you from having to get past some of the flamethrowers. Just remember to go forward a little bit as you cross them. I struggle to climb up there. While this final maze might seem normal, like a typical format, you actually have six ghosts chasing you instead of four. Now we rescue Pax, dearly beloved. His legally new dearly beloved, that is. One more bonus round.
I get one more minor bonus. So after you get enough points, you get this as a present. A magic key. This gives you the ability to open fruit doors and any remaining cages without requiring fruit or keys. You have to really do a lot of grinding in the same stages in order to have it ready by grave danger though. Or be really lucky or punctual with the slot bonus. Before we put Talkman out of his misery, we're gonna do the mazes of the boss mansion. I'm only gonna do one to three for the boss mansion, because after those are done, I unlock marathon play. And because I already have the special key, there's no reason to play four to six individually. Especially since technically I already did that in the respective stages they were locked in. You know, what about the maze stages that I didn't realize until I started recording this video and do marathon play? The unlockable stages, at least most of them, are literally copy and pastes of the starting maze stages. Except with the hazards. I didn't notice that until more recently.
after you have completed every maze stage in the game at least once, and beating the mazes within the stages they're unlocked in to first unlock them does count. You unlock Marathon Play. Just like with the original Pac-Man world, this is where you play every maze stage in the game in order from start to end on the remaining lives you have during your adventure. While this might sound scary at first, especially since you can't reset a single stage, or else you have to reset the whole game, if you focus more on survival than score, you should be all good. And marathon play is also required for 100% completion. And while I did play these mazes all in the playthrough already, tough, I'm gonna have to play them again. So, uh... I'll let you enjoy this without any further commentary. And you can always skip ahead via the chapters feature if you have no interest in re-watching these.
finally, that I'm fun is over. Not that it was hard, just that it was boring. Alright, so with that out of the way, we proceed to the final battle. Let's go. Unlike with the original Pac-Man world, you can do this stage before rescuing all your friends. Of course, rescuing your friends is strongly recommended. So, uh, here we go. This boss fight is quite different from what it was like in the original PlayStation title. He starts by shooting bullets out of his fingers and doing dash attacks if you're far away enough. This can be very hard to avoid. I figured out on my own that a rev roll to the side real quick can help dodge his charging attack. Then, uh, you want to keep your distance from his shot as well. Your friends will throw a heal all to you after you get the one hit point left, just like before. Stand still, will you? More dot throw. Do this. He has nerve to eat a metal dot in this game. Jump after he lands and avoid the impulse waves. They damage you. And then here's what makes this part fun. You have to wait until he does this. Gotta get the metal dot quickly and attack him while you're still metal. And then his dash attack also leaves a trail of fire, making it even more annoying as well. You also have to be careful of where Pac-Man is, in the scene where his friends help him. Because if you're standing right where you can take damage, it'll register another hit, and you can lose a stock. At least that's happened to me once before. Here's a random bonus fact about Talk Man you probably already know. Talk Man's name spelled backwards is Nomcot. 
which is a subsidiary of Namco back in the day that would make ports of their arcade games and arcade light games for game consoles that were out back then, like, like the NDS and the Sega Genesis slash Mega Drive. somehow able to hit him again there. Overcharging, huh? Like, that's gonna scare me. Now, you have to watch out for the impulse waves from his stomps. And also be careful not to get crushed underneath him and rev roll into one of his boots until it weakens him enough. I struggled to land a head on him for some reason. And if you're not fast enough, he'll do the rev rolling attack that he did in the original game. Which can really screw you up if you're not careful. Then you have to quickly come onto his head and bounce. Like this. That's so much better. Be careful of where his hands land as well. We finish him off for real. So, um... Yeah, what's funny about this game is that Pac-Man actually forgives Orson, the ghost-controlling talk man, if you've rescued all of his friends. 
If you didn't rescue all the friends, he'll do the original ending where he eats a power pellet and vanishes him off. If you do rescue everybody, though, he'll actually forgive the ghost, and then the ghosts, in addition to the Pack family, will join him for his party at the end. And then after their animations, here they all are. And then we get interactive credits with a song, which I might or might not be allowed to play. The letters you collect during this interactive credits may spell out thank you for playing. And then, um, you go back to the slot machine to get bonus points from the final battle. And then you're taken back to the title screen. So with that ends the long play. A reminder, the requirements for 100% are beating every stage, getting all of the letters, rescuing all the friends, playing all the mazes, marathon mode, and the magic key. If you get all of those, you can end in 100% completion like I did. 
this game was really good fun to play. I really like this remake. I think Namco did a good job remaking this great PlayStation title. And then there's also a little question mark block in the Ghost Island Zone in the pirate ship area. After you beat the game, that becomes an original Pac-Man arcade cabinet, and interfacing it allows you to play the original arcade game. It plays identically to how it does in Pac-Man Museum Plus. Alright, so that's it for this long play. Consider subscribing if you like Nomco Arcade or other franchises like Mega Man or Crash Bandicoot, for example. I am Colister, the Master of Ponage. Thanks for watching, and I'll see ya.